Good afternoon and welcome to Fishing Tales. Today's show is going to be Tackle Talk. My name is Sean McSeveny and I hope, hopefully uh, my first live show will, will go well. Um, what we're going to do, I've got a few things for you today. Um, I'm going to talk about supporting your local tackle shop, something that's very, very close to my heart. Uh, I'm going to talk a couple of things. I've got Shimano Sedona 3000 reel I'm going to do a review on. Uh, I'm going to talk about a number of um, uh, a, a number of uh, rigs that we've got here um, from my mate uh, Paul at, at Bassman uh, Bassman Bounty Rigs, and also we've got uh, a feature on the Kelly Kettle. Now this is, I know this is tackle talk, and um, this is not necessarily uh, Kelly Kettle, not necessarily uh, a bit of tackle, um, but. I think uh, I think it's something that every angler, every outdoor person should have if they've got the room to take it. So um, let's have a little look uh, at a couple of some of these items now. Okay, so I apologize, I realized I didn't have the audio on. So let me go through that bit again. And yeah, I just seen your, your message, Gavin, unmute. I wish I'd read that a little bit earlier, but I got so um, engrossed in telling you what I was gonna be doing, I actually messed it up a little bit. So um, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is talk about the Shimano Sedona reel. It's a 3000 size reel. And I think for the money, it's a pretty good value reel. It's just over £50. I've seen it in a couple of places in sale for around about £49.99, uh, but majority it's been, it's been around about £50.55. Now, a lot of people get caught up in the reels and say, oh, what's the best reel, what's the best reel? To be quite honest, it's one of the areas where you can actually save yourself a little bit of money and spend the money elsewhere when you're doing a, a rod and reel setup. At the end of the day, as long as the reel performs well, it it's smooth, it doesn't fall to bits in a couple of minutes, you know, that's all you need really. You know, a good clutch is, is a must, but you can spend two or three hundred pound on a reel, but you can get a reel that does the same job for 50. So why, why spend the huge amount of money? I would rather spend that money on buying a, uh, you know, a, a better rod, putting it towards a better rod. And I'm not going to talk about rods today, but certainly will in the future. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, hopefully we'll have access to my friend Paul, uh, who's got market tackle in Plymouth. We're going to do some live streaming from his place, and you can you can ask him directly, and we can go through some of the tackle that's in his shop. So, you know, that's something that we've got to look forward to in the future. That's of course if you like these videos. If you do, please don't forget like subscribe you'll get a notification when we are live again or and it's not always going to be live i've got a lot of videos planned i've got a lot of content the reason i'm doing this these shows live is i over the past few years i've videoed loads and loads of content but i've not 
actually used it. So, ah, I just see Paul Bassman Gordon is actually online now. Hi, Paul, just talking about your your shop and we're gonna go through some of your rigs and things like that we've got later. Good to see you. Uh, so what I'm gonna actually do is just go through now the um, the, the Sedona and uh, just just have a quick look at this for you. I've, I've reviewed this reel over the past six months. So we don't just do a quick, oh, let's spin it. You know, it's got 500 yards of line. That's great, buy one from well, this clip uh, from, from Amazon or something like that. Remember, support your local tackle shop. Let's get on and just, you know, help these guys out. So what I want to do is just quickly um, just go through the um, Shimano Sedona. So I'll just bring it up so we've got ready. And please feel free to ask me anything as we go along. done it again haven't I? I forgot to unmute. I do apologize for that. Okay let's start again on the reel. So what I was saying is that for around about 55 this is a pretty good reel. Now the things I look for in a reel are good line lay. So what, what can happen if you don't get good line lay 
it all bunches in one area and then it can overspill, which all leads to, to wind knots, leads to loss of line. Um, so the actual capacity of this line, I've got nanofill on here. I've backed it up because I, I needed a little bit um, extra backing. I've got 110 yards of, of nanofill on here, which is actually narrow, which is actually thinner than braid. So don't think, oh, that's all you get. I've actually backed this up with some mono just so I could have a nice smooth. Um, so it, it comes up to the lip and it, it gives me more distance when I'm casting. Uh, what I also like is something that's very important is a positive uh, bail arm so what i don't want to do is when i'm casting i don't want that bail arm to flick over and you can see from the video you know we were casting some pretty rough conditions and also you know weatherproofing the reel has got to be weatherproof yes if you want to spend two or three hundred pound on a reel or maybe even just over a hundred now in the days you know you can get salt water sealed bearings but you know for for around about 50 you're not going to get that but you know, you're still going to get a reel. So I've used this for six months. That's probably the equivalent of, you know, a normal person using it for about three years. So for me to get a year out of a reel, I think that's actually good value for me. Um, I, I, you know, I, I do look to get maybe 18 months, two years out of a reel, but I never ask for any more than that. And I don't really think that even if I spent two or three hundred on a reel that I would get that much more value out of it. I drop it. You can see here that you know it's got some scratches and and, and bits and pieces on it. Let me just show you on the um, on the other cam. It might be a little bit easier to for you to see that. Um, you know, there's you know it, it, you can see it's not unmarked. It's been laid up against rocks. It's been dropped. It's been immersed, and it's still super smooth. So um, you know, I'm I'm pretty pretty happy with the fact that you know it's. It has been well and truly abused. I don't think I've ever washed it. The only time the only time it ever gets near washing is when I drop it in the river or it rains on it. <laughs> that's that's the closest it ever comes to being um, to to seeing some fresh water. Uh, line capacity. So I've got 110 yards or meters of nanofill on here. Uh, it will take around about 250 of 10 to 12 pound um, mono. But whenever I'm lure fishing, I always use um, I always use nanofill or braid. Nanofill is my preferred, but I'll get into that on a different day. Um, it's it, it's nice and smooth. It's only got three ball bearings plus one. The one being the roller bearing. So if you ever wonder why it's what what it means by three plus one, it's that little bearing there. Um, it's the, that's what's called the roller bearing, and that's the one that is called the plus one. Um, so I like the fact it's weatherproof. I like the fact that, you know, after six month abuse, it's still good. And I like it even more that it doesn't cost me two or three hundred pound a box or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, would I recommend the Shimano Sedona 3000 for lure fishing? Absolutely. I've caught, say, as I say, caught hundreds of fish on it. And, you know, just just keep going. Right. Um, what I'm going to do next, so this is a little bit of a departure, um, this is, uh, I know what I'm going to talk about next isn't um, isn't exactly fishing tackle, but um, it is it is something I use a lot, so I'll be back to you in a second. Okay, welcome back to Tackle Talk. Um, so the next thing I've got on my agenda is a Kelly kettle. Okay, so this is something I like to take on the beach. I'll, uh, it comes in a in a bag like this, so I can put it in my rucksack. I can even just attach it or just carry it. It's not that heavy. Uh, the one I have here is the Scout. So it comes as a kit. So I've got the Kelly kettle. This is 1.2 litres of water. This will hold. Uh, basically, I don't know if you can see that, but basically it's what's called a volcano. Uh, uh, a, volcano a volcano type stove. Um, yes, it, it boils water. But also, I've used it for all sorts of things like cooking. So you get a whole host of... Um, of bits with with a scout, uh, you've got a couple of, uh, couple of mugs, 
stainless steel. So the scout is stainless steel. That's one of the important things. So you may think, oh, that looks a little bit dirty, but I've had this, this Kelly kettle for over two years now, and it is a really, really good bit of kit. So let me just show you a little video of, um, I took recently when I was out and about with my family. Um, and it's, uh, you know, just, just shows the versatility of this of this Kelly kettle. And if you're looking for something, oh, your missus gone, or your partner, excuse my uh, sexism, you know, if they're saying, oh, what do you want for Christmas? And you've got everything, have a look at this because you might think, actually, I don't have everything. Hey, welcome back. So I'm just looking through some of the comments. Carissa, this is not pre-recorded. Obviously some of the video that I'm showing you is pre-recorded because I can't be in three or four places at once, but I can guarantee you this is not pre-recorded. But I do appreciate your comments. Please keep them coming. If you like what you're seeing, subscribe and you'll get a notification whenever I go live or whenever I create a new video. So I'm gonna be creating a lot of new videos. Um, I've got, I had a lot of content of I've taken over the past few years and sometimes you just don't get to finish it and the reason why I've decided to start doing some live uh, broadcasts is I can talk over some of the bits that I've done I've got carp fishing videos I've got uh, or fly fishing for carp I've got pike videos I've got bass content I've got so much content that never has been finished and there's some really good boat fishing content for for, for big blonde rays and things like that and it's you know one of these things that you just never get finished. So if you bear with me and you know continue to, uh, to to follow the channel, you will see what I've got coming up in store, and I do hope you like it. So back to the Kelly kettle. Um, as I said, it comes in uh, this little bag. You get everything you need. So this is the Scout version, stainless steel uh, bowls and cups. It all folds down into a really neat little bag, which is really easy for you to carry around. The beauty of it is that you can go along any sort of canal bank or, or, or lake, something like that, that obviously allows you to have fire, or somewhere like the beach, and there's always tons and tons of, of, of driftwood on the beach. And it, it starts, these candy kettles, they start really, really quickly. You get them up and going, and in no time, uh, you know, you, you, it takes about a minute and a half to boil 1.2 litres of water. It, all you're using is just a few tweaks from the beach, so it's absolutely fantastic. And also it helps clean the beach up as well, so, you know, that, that can't be a bad thing. So let me just put this away. And then we'll go on to the next thing. The next thing is, um, come back to my mate, Paul. Um, uh, so, as I said to you before, Paul has got a, a 
a fish tackle store down in Plymouth uh, Pannier Market. It's you know it, he's got a really good range, uh, and you will see that you know he just doesn't sell. He actually knows what he's talking about, and you know with, with that, uh, I just want to show you um, a, a couple of things that that Paul's produced. So let me just. Uh, let me just get this this ready a second. Um, so, I had, when I visited Paul last week, um, I just went a little bit. Uh, crazy because it was the first day after lockdown I hadn't been able to get into any of the tackle shops uh, and I was delighted to talk to Paul but one of the things um, you know I'll just show you this um, which sort of impressed me I haven't had a chance to use it yet but it's called a Kenichi um, bullet head and the similarity to my favorite lure uh, the fish black minnow is amazing it feels the same uh, it's got the same texture, but it's about, well, it's 475. So you're looking at about 675, seven pound for the same, the same lure in most of the other shops. Uh, that's something I still haven't worked out. Why the, um, why fish are charging such a ridiculous amount for these. But anyway, we'll, we'll talk about lures a bit later on, on another time. Um, at the moment, what I want to just do is is talk more about the rigs and things like that. Um, so if I just bring up, where is my thing? yeah. So as I said, I'll, I'll talk about. I want to talk about rigs. Uh, now, one of the things that I find very frustrating is sometimes. I don't have time to make up rigs. I normally make my own rigs up because I like them in a very specific way. I, I, I like to use amnesia as my, my snood length. I like specific size and style of hooks. Uh, and I also like them specific lengths. And you, if you have a look on, on the Fishing Tales website, we've got a number of uh, demonstrations on, on how to make different rigs. But sometimes I don't have the time. And I go to a lot of tackle shops to, to try and buy pre-made rigs and to be quite honest, they're normally pretty rubbish. They're mass produced in China, and even some of the big companies, I won't mention any names for legal reasons, but you know, they produce absolute garbage. The, the people who are tying these rigs up, they don't they probably never fished in their life. They don't care that it's you know six inches too long and it doesn't clip down properly. They think they're probably giving you a bit of a bargain because they're giving you a bit of an extra length of line, but that's not the way we're born it. What I do like is really, really good quality pre-made rigs, and I I can actually, you know, vouch for these ones from from Paul. Um, I, there's a, there's very few tackle shops I've been to that actually do good rigs, and one of them is the Tackle Box in Lane Regis, and Darren he makes absolutely brilliant bolt rigs. If you want bolt rigs, I think there is you know, he does probably the best bolt rigs I've ever seen, but. As far as I'm concerned, probably the best uh, best rigs that I've actually seen um, for sure have actually come from from Paul's shop. Now we're just going to talk about them a little bit. But let, let me just quickly before we go, just have a quick look at uh, what comments are coming in and reply to any of them. Uh, okay, uh, Carusa, Carusa, I'm, I'm, do apologise, Carusa, if I'm if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Um, so you say the the fishing down in Cornwall has been diabolical last year. Yeah, I think um, my friend Gavin, who is is probably listening in on this, would definitely uh, concur with you. Uh, the North Coast fishing, we've, we've been down a few times. Uh, I have got some video of fishing of fish that we did actually catch. One of us down there, mostly ras and mackerel, but yeah, the, the, the bass fishing down there hasn't been great. Uh, so. Uh, Gavin will certainly um, <laughs> will agree. Yeah, he has he just agree it's pants. You're right. It, it has been pants there this year. Uh, the fishing around Plymouth has been pretty good, and as far as I'm concerned, the bass fishing uh, further down the coast around Plymouth has been pretty good. Uh, down into Devon uh, and into Dorset ha actually has been phenomenal this year. And I think we're into December. 
And as far as I'm concerned, December is one of the best months for bass fishing. So do not put your rods away yet. It's absolutely brilliant. Anyway, back to what I wanted to talk about. And that was uh, the different different rigs and pre-made rigs. Um, so let's, let's have a quick look. Uh, and I hope you like my Tackle Talk logo. Okay, so when I was at Paul's shop, I thought I need some flounder rigs because uh, this is obviously flounder fishing is coming up and he suggested a couple of these. So Paul ties his own rigs. They are absolutely brilliant. I will not lie. They are fantastic, um, really, really good rigs. And I just want to like, just go through a couple of these with you. So I just dropped the little bead. Uh, I'll pick it up in a minute. But so this is uh, this is one of Paul's um, flounder rigs, Lumi beads, lots and lots of silver. And flounder, as we know, they love a bit of bling. So you know, this is an absolutely brilliantly made rig. And I've, I've never seen anything, to be quite honest, that is as good as this anywhere else. The, the quality of, of the line, the knots, they're absolutely perfect. I don't know if you can see that or not, but. You know, there's there's no tags on the knots, and that's one of the things that you always get when you when you use cheap, uh, buy cheap rigs. The, the knots are pretty rubbish. Um, okay, so I just see Paul has put a little re uh, put a, a link up on the chat. Feel feel free once you've finished watching me, of course, to uh, to, to go there and have a look. Um, so. This is this is another rig that has definitely intrigued me. It's a pop-up rig. So this is what I really wanted to talk about today: is pop-up rigs. Um, now, this is something that carp fishermen. If you're a carp fisherman, you will definitely be well aware of this type of rigs. Um, I'm not going to take the, the bead out of that because I'm going to lose it. But um, you know, the, the the rigs that the the carp fishermen are using are um, you know they're they're they're, they're pretty. Um, they're, they're, they're pretty, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, versatile bunch of people, carp fishermen, they're always looking for new rigs, but I've, I've tend to find that with sea fish and I stick with the, the same ones, but this one here, this is this is something that really does um, sort of look very good. And I'll just put it back under the other, the other camera here. Um, now, what, um, what, what you notice about this is that, you know, it's got loads of different uh, coloured beads but what happens is they, these ones they just it'll take a single ragworm and it'll just pop it up like this now if you're fishing and you know there's a lot of crap that's obviously going to be beneficial but also it just presents that so it's just floating in the water and you know the, the, the ragworm will just be there and it'll be really really enticing to a fish so you know I know that these rigs work uh, and it's definitely something I think you should have a quick look at now, um, what I would what I would say um, is just you know be be adventurous. Ha have a look, see what you think you can do, um, because there's always you know we're, we're always looking to try and, and and find different ways and better ways of catching fish. Um, and I you know I, I just absolutely love um, the ability of being able to do that. So what I really want to show you now is the um, is the rig that that Paul has created, which I absolutely love. Um, it's a huge pop-up rig, and it's designed for big fish. And we all like to catch big fish. I'm sure you would agree. Now this one, maybe what, have you got a name for this rig, Paul? Okay, I won't take these bits out of the bag. It's a little, it's a little T-bar slider. Um, it just helps you attach your your um, your your weight to it. Now, take a look at these. So these are, I believe, these are seven O hooks. So, so you've got a panel rig, and there is absolutely enormous 
Um, they, uh, as, as Paul's mates mentioned, these look like boilies, they're so big. Uh, but they will, this rig will pop up a hole. Um, it, it, it'll pop up a whole cuttlefish or a full squid. Um, and when you're after big fish, that's exactly the kind of thing you want to go. Now, I always believe in, believe, I'm a great believer in that, you know, it's all very well people talking about lures and rigs and things like that and different baits, but do they actually work? Well, I know for a fact that these do work. And I'm just going to show you a little video that Paul took just about two weeks ago. I'm not even sure it's as far as two weeks ago. Ah, here we go. It's the XXL pop-up rig. XXL pop-up rig. Bassman Bounties rigs. Absolutely brilliant. And so you're actually going to see this rig in action. So just sit back, enjoy this, because I certainly enjoyed it when he showed it to me. Here we are out on the XXL pop-ups. It's only a matter of time for something decent grab one of these pop-ups, man. I mean, I've been working on these like a couple of years I've been doing the big pop-up, but I've been experimenting. Yeah, and I've come up. I've come. I've come to the conclusion that that works. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a beast! It's got to be nearly twenty. We haven't weighed it yet, but the hook's still right on the side of the gob there. Look, whole cuttlefish popped up. I was going to take a picture of this thing in the tide flowing, but we didn't get a chance. It's a it's a it's a lovely eel. <laughs> it's a lovely eel. We're we're right up an estuary here. So yeah, it was. Uh, I was after a big bass, you know, like. It's only a matter of time before some, you know, eight, nine, ten pound comes up and smashes a whole squid or a whole cuttle. So you know, we're out here. We're out. We're. Out, I'm always testing stuff, and we're just out tonight for a bit of fun. And I said, "Come on, Brett, we've got to catch something on these pop-ups." And yeah, on the business, beat. mate, isn't it? Yeah, I haven't got my hands in or anything yet. So she's still hooked up. But I mean, there's the there's the Tronics Pro. Yeah, that is the Hooligan Tenno. Right out the side of the gob there, look. Hey, I've got to say, these these pop-ups look like boilies, don't they? They do, yeah. Uh, they're, and... they're soft, they're spongy, they're flattened. They're actually flattened pop-ups. And I've got a sea glow bead on there, look, which is, I mean, they're amazing. I mean, if I just if I just shine that up a minute, look, the, the, the glowy bit. And then we back the light off it. You back the light off that, see? Yeah, Look the difference on that. that. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, that was popped up in the tide. I'm really made up. It was a hell of a good scrap and, and Brett did well to land it, to be honest, because it was not happy. 